Welcome to the city of Shanlufa, or as the Turks like to call it, Ufa. Located 93 miles east of Gaziantep, Shanlufa is probably one of the most historical and interesting sites here in the southeast corner of Turkey. We're Marion and Chris. In 2018, we quit the 9 to 5 and bought Trudy, our camper van. We are currently on an adventure to drive the circumference of the world. You join us as we explore the east of Turkey. With mystical lands, adventurous train rides, great wild camping spots and interesting characters. Good morning! Good morning. <laughs> We've woken up here in uh, Şanlıurfa down in the uh, southeastern part of Turkey. We found this car park right next to the uh, main museum here and uh, we've been parked up here. It was all going so well and then this happened. It was okay, the music stopped at about half past ten. We had a good night's sleep. And the music was very good. It was a very, very cool... Uh, free concert. Free concert. <laughs> right in front of the van we had front row seats so this morning we're going to go and explore this wonderful city this city has huge religious importance and is known as the city of the prophets because legend says that the prophet Abraham was born in a cave here. Which is exactly what we're gonna go and have a look at right now. So we've arrived at this wonderful looking mosque here, the Malvidi Halil Jami. It's in this grounds, in this complex, where the um, cave where Abraham was born is located so we're going to go and have a look and see if we can uh, get inside so legend says that the prophet's mother gave birth to him in secret because king nimrod had been warned in a prophecy that a great leader was soon to be born so he set out to kill all of the newborns in the city. So we've just gone into the, uh, the room where the cave, where the prophet Abraham was born. Um, absolutely fascinating. As you go in, it's free to go in. There's um, a, a lady's entrance and a man's entrance and uh, people go in there to pray and show their respects. I was just saying to Chris that there's something very beautiful about being in a place of faith, surrounded by people who have belief. Um, it's very soothing and calming and it's just a really peaceful place. So first impressions walking around the city this morning. We've come down into one of the parks and it's quite interesting. Uh, walking around with the camera, we were challenged by uh, some local police or security guards. Um, they, were, they wanted to know what we were doing, why we had a camera. Um, I'm not sure that they get a lot of Western tourists and walking around with a camera, I think made them a little bit nervous. I'm not sure why. Um, but yeah, it's an absolutely beautiful park here. So the park around uh, the mosque is absolutely lovely. Beautiful trees, it's got a really relaxed atmosphere. Um, Whoever the gardener is needs a pay rise. <laughs> it's a big place to look after. And uh, they've got little cafes and things dotted by the pools. So we thought we'd uh, stop and have a morning coffee and just enjoy the scenery. They got little stalls here selling trinkets and bits and pieces. Merhaba. Merhaba. Nasılsın? İyi, sağ ol. Ah. Merhaba. Evet. 
Kahve. Kahve. Evet. We're coming for coffee. That's a good idea. They got this little restaurant here right next to the water. This is why I am a travel blogger. For the filming <laughs> days when we're not in the van working, but we're out having coffee in one of the most beautiful locations. And look how clear the water is, so crystal clear. So all the way through this park here, there are pools. Uh, and in the pools, there are literally thousands of carp and they are the sacred carp of Golbashi. The fish play an important part in the prophet Abraham's story. According to the story, King Nimrod set out to burn Abraham because of his beliefs, but God saved him. A storm swept him high into the air and he landed right here in this park. The fire turned into water and the ambers turned into fish. So these fish are actually classed as sacred and you are encouraged to feed them here in the park. But legend says that should anybody kill one of these sacred fishes, that they will in turn go blind. I just love water fish it's so relaxing is it just me or is this just like the best place to sit down and have a coffee in the morning i think it's pretty good they even have a couple of little rowing boats that you can go around this pool in so we've had a wonderful walk around the uh, the park enjoyed the fish and now we're going to try and walk up and see if we can get up to the uh, fortress. So as we're walking up, there's little cafes, lots of shishas for smoke up there, souvenir shops, and the steps keep going up. We're trying to get into the castle. Uh, and then left. Okay. Yeah? <laughs> That's so nice. We've just jumped into this uh, random little minibus. We got to the top and couldn't see how you actually crossed. There was a great big moat. Yeah, we asked for directions and he went, get in! Never jump into cars with strangers, kids. Ever. Don't do it, kids. <laughs> So basically we walked up to the top on the other side and now he's dropped us off at the bottom of the hill so we got to walk up again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Two so bits of cake today. We're basically at the other end of the park uh, where the mosque is so uh, yeah we can uh, we can walk up. Definitely getting our exercise walking up the fortress twice. There's steps here, steps here, and a ramp here. I'm not sure which way we're going. We'll just keep going up and see what happens. We just met these uh, two ladies climbing up uh, to enjoy the view. And in um, fact, one <laughs> of our latest words that we've learned in Turkish is kapat, which is closed. <laughs> Yay! So now we know the castle is it's closed. closed. That's why we can't get in it. <laughs> um, but there are some lovely views over the city here, like you can see behind us. So I think now it would be rude if we didn't go and find a little bit of lunch. We walk down to the end of the park and it looks like this is the beginning of the local market that we're going to go and have a little look around. So the, uh, the first section of the market we've come into has got lots of nice clothes and headscarves. Oh, it's big. It looks like a very big market. Coming down, you've always got the Donna kebabs. Oh, lovely. Looks good. <laughs> Whatever. I always love the spice shops because they're just so colorful and they smell so good. So we just come into another building here more spices oh wow look at this so 
So walking along all the way up, dangling off the roof here though. Dried peppers. Look at that. You would have heard us say it a lot of times. Every town we go to, we try and go to the local market because it really is such a nice way to get a feel for local life and uh, to see what people sell, the types of foods and things like that. And uh, this market so far is not disappointing. It's got a wonderful atmosphere. Look at all those peppers there. That's great. It's got a little trolley of uh, peppers there with some weighing scales. What you found? Somewhere beautiful. Oh, this looks lovely. Is this a restaurant? It's so beautiful. It looks nice. <laughs> so we found this, uh, I suppose it's the equivalent of a food court here in the smack in the middle of the market with lots of different stands selling different foods right here in the market. This was a good little find and a little side alley. You are very welcome. Well done, Marianne. You're welcome. That's a high five moment. <laughs> wow. That is huge. That's beautiful. That's Look not at that. what I thought I ordered. We've got chicken and thing <laughs> and peppers and that's delicious. With the bread. Oh. Ooh, that's lovely. Look at that. Got to try a little bit of that chicken. Oh, you can tell it's barbecued. Mmm. That is so good. A little bit spicy. And then aubergine with some lamb, lamb meat inside. So it comes with like a little spicy dip here. Let's have a look. Let's just try that. Mmm. Is that spicy, spicy? Oh, that's hot. Hot and a bit sour. Look at that. It's just absolutely delicious. That's how you eat it. Mmm. Well, that was a super delicious lunch. And uh, now we're just going to carry on, have another little walk around the market before we head to uh, a very special museum. This looks like the uh, the metalware shop. You hear lots of banging and tapping away. It's funny because like many markets there's lots of local produce and things that you can buy anywhere generically but there's also some really special um, skilled labour here where they make tin, metal um, and local produce. Wow. It's amazing. It's all of these decorative plates and stuff that are being made here they're all wall clocks and he's making, look at that. Wow, that is a skill and a half. These are some of the finished produce here. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, we've seen in many markets the beautiful objects that they sell, but to see the one the intricate detail that goes Whatever. into making it. <laughs> Whatever. There you go, I love the way they use the motorbike with the sidecar to strap on a little bit of metal work to take it around town. There you go. <laughs> Get your knife sharpened. <laughs> Health and safety in the workplace. No Watch your back. <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> There's a skill walking through a market with a cup of tea like that. found our way back out of the market on a very busy little street here still with lots of food and uh, things going on 
So after a, a while getting lost in that market, I have to say it's probably one of the most interesting markets we've walked around in Turkey because it's like a maze and there's just such a diversity of things going on. I get lost in a car park, so for me, without Chris, <laughs> you would never see me again, ever. And uh, if you do come to this city, definitely spare half an hour, an hour to go and have a wander around in the market, full of wonderful characters, uh, nice food and very interesting things to see. So we couldn't leave Shanlufa without visiting the archaeological museum. The museum tells the story of human habitation from the Neolithic times all the way through to the Ottoman times and the museum has some of the oldest artifacts in the world. Let's go and have a look. Behind me is the Urfa Man. This is the oldest known statue of humanity. It's life size, it's 1.8 meters tall, and it's thought to be between 9 and 11,000 BC. It's before the times of pottery and having metal tools. That is amazing. So this is a reconstruction of Goblia Tepe, the oldest temple in the world, which is where we're going to be going after here because it's literally half an hour's drive from the city. An absolutely fascinating museum and definitely one of the sites not to be missed if you do come to this city. Next door there is also the Mosaic Museum. It's included on the same ticket, so make sure you don't miss it. That's where we're going to go and have a quick look now. The story behind these wonderful mosaics is that back in 2006 they were laying a sewer pipeline and they discovered these hidden gems. Isn't that wonderful? It makes you wonder what else lies beneath the ground that has yet to be discovered. What's fabulous about going around the museum, they've actually got these walkways with glass, so you're able to see the details below. They also have depictions and explanations all the way around the edge of the museum. So what you see on the floor, you can actually understand. It gives a full story, and each story is told also on one of these storyboards. It's incredible. Look at the details and the colors that you can see. It always fascinates me, the detail and such small little pieces of stone that they're able to create something so symmetrical and looks so perfect. And what's funny is that while I'm walking around, every time I touch the metal handrail, I get an electric shock. I was just gonna say to you, did you feel that shock? <laughs> I've had one, so many. Fantastic day. And uh, I'm sure we are leaving the car park just at the right time looking at that structure going up behind us and uh, we are off to Goblia Tepe, Goblekli Tepe, Goblia Tepe. This is our last video before Christmas 2021. Yes it is, but there'll be one more video coming out between the Christmas and the New Year. Where has the time gone? I can't believe another year has gone by. It's been amazing uh, filming and taking you on a crazy adventure. We've got lots more coming. As you know, in the new year, we're shipping to the States. Fingers crossed, it all goes according to plan. And uh, we look forward to seeing you after Christmas. For those of you still loving Turkey, we've still got some more videos about Turkey that will be coming out. We've saved the best till last <laughs> because some of the east of Turkey is absolutely amazing and over the next few weeks we're going to be publishing and making those videos for you. 
We're gonna be spending some time with our family. We hope that you're spending time with your family and we send all our love and Christmas wishes to you now. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. So we've arrived at this wonderful looking mosque here in the center called the Melvidi Halil Kami. Chami. Chami. Chami. Makes you wonder what else lies below the, below, three, two, one. 